Hello everyone. In this video, we will solve 2017 question paper for UGC Net Computer Science Discipline. And if you want to download the presentation that is used in this video, then you can visit our website www.digimento.com. And over there, you can go to the download section. From the download section, you can download the presentation PPTs for this video, as well as you can also download the previous year UGC Net question papers. If you want to take the case course for UGC Net Computer Science or UGC Net Electronics Science, then you can visit our course section to get the fees details and to take the courses. Or you can also call us on the contact numbers provided above. So without any further delay, let us just start solving the question paper of 2017 UGC Net. I hope that uh, this video will be very helpful for you and uh, this will help you in your UGC Net exam preparation. For the complete video lectures, you can visit our website and this video uh, is available for every each and every one of you. So let us start. Question number 13 is, which of the following storage classes have global visibility in C or C++? So let's first talk about the storage classes and then we will discuss the different type of storage classes and their functionality. So what do you understand by storage classes? Um, let's suppose if you define any variable in a C or C++ language, right? Just like if this is void main and this is integer, let's suppose x. Hmm? Now you define some variable. So when the when you define some variable, so the storage class will you know will tell you uh, the scope and the lifetime of variable within a C program. So what is the functionality of a storage class? You can write it down like this storage class defines defines the scope and lifetime of variable within a program whether it's a c or c plus plus program okay within a program whether it is a c or c plus plus program right now now we have different type of storage classes first different first storage classes let's talk about the different types of storage classes so the first type is auto second type is extern or register third type is static and the fourth fourth type of storage class is extern let's talk about all the class storage classes one by one right so this is auto or storage class register auto register storage class static storage class and the external storage class now let's talk about auto storage class so auto storage class or you can say the name of this um, storage class is a it is a auto storage class it is a default storage class for all the local variables for all the local variables right so all the local variables you define in your c program so by default if you did not you know uh, write anything so by default it is a auto storage class okay and uh, you can see that the second point is it can be it can be only accessed it can be only accessed within a block so it's like if this is you know int main and it, there, there is a one block and you define some variable here so its scope is here only so out of the block the scope of uh, this auto class is not there okay so int x can be accessed only in this block only and if, if you did not write anything so by default it is a auto storage class now the next one is register so register storage classes where we are using this kind of storage classes okay so when you define some variable and uh, you want uh, you know you want very quick access to that variable so in that case what you are going to do uh, you store the that particular variable in the register so that you can easily access or you can easily fast in a fast manner you can easily access the variable in that case we are using the register storage classes so just write it down 
register storage class register storage class used by those variables used by those local variables write it down local variables okay this is important used by those local variables those need those need quick access okay and uh, you can write it down then apart from the you know storage of the variable all the functionality is same as the auto storage class so they have same functionality they follow the same functionality as that of auto storage class okay now the next one is static and external now let's talk about the static first so static storage class so this class is used to declare the static variable this is your first point so those variables which are static those values are static not going to change in the entire program so there we are using this kind of static storage class so write it down this class is used to declare static variables first point hmm? now the next point is static variables uh, this be defined in your program so the static variables have a property of you can say of preserving their values even after going out of the scope okay so static means those value will not going to change so static variables ki property hai ki wo agar out of the scope means out of the block agar is block mein humne uh, define kiya hai static and we define this variable is static we write it down static int x so the scope of the this variable if it uh, if i talk about this variable in other block then this here also this value is not going to change right so just second point is static variables have a property have a property of preserving their values even after out of scope okay so these kind of static you know storage class so they have initialized once so initialize the value of x once and uh, until the exist of the entire program the value remains same the meaning of the statement is this okay and the defined assigned value to the static uh, variable is default value is equal to 0 okay initialized now the next one is extern storage classes so external storage class is nothing it is a global variable so those properties or those features global variables so those properties and features of global variables is same in the external storage classes so once the global variable um, initialized by some legal value it you know it uh, you can say declared in some other block and it can be accessed or used in some other block ठीक है, so it can be accessed with any function or in any block the value according to the you know need it going to override. So you can change the value of this global variable in some another block apart from you know uh, where it is declared. So you can write it down. It can be accessed with in any function or block. any function or block the value of the global variable the value of you can say the value of this variable can be overridden so you can change the uh, value of this kind of variable but in static you are not able to change as a name suggests the value is static not going to change so the question is now come to the question which of the following storage classes have global visi visibility in c and c++ so global visibility is only possible in the extern uh, storage class we already discussed so the correct answer is option 2 right and uh, 
here I'm writing the you know short note for all the storage classes because in the exam um, already two or uh, you know two or three times this question is come is already came um, so that's why I just write it down a very short short point so that you can easily answer this kind of question right now question number 14 is which of the following operators cannot be overloaded in CNC++ first one is bitwise right shift assignment second is address of third is indirection and the fourth one is structure reference so first we talk about the operator overloading right so operator overloading basically it is a concept in which we can give spatial meaning to an existing operator like we have existing operators like plus minus equal to right so we have this uh, existing operators but we are giving some spatial meaning to this existing operators or you can say it is a specific case of polymorphism right so in this uh, this uh, like they are the existing operators right now we treated these existing operators as a polymorphism functions they have different behaviors on the or you can say they have different behaviors depending on the type of arguments okay so you can say that operator overloading operator overloading it is a special case of it is a special case of polymorphism right in which the existing in which the existing operators like plus minus equi equi uh, equal to or division right in which the existing operators treated as polymorphism function polymorphism function and they have different and they have different behavior depending on the type of arguments depending on the type of arguments okay so this is the meaning of operator overloading ki hamare paas jo existing operators hain wo hamare as a polymorphic functions ki tarah behave karenge ki agar we are giving some different type of arguments so they behave differently right let's suppose if two integer values are there and i'm using the operator existing operator let's suppose plus and 5 plus 4 is 9 right here this operator this additional operator is behaving like addition of two numbers right and uh, so the argument in this case is integer Let's suppose I'm giving the character values. So this is a plus p. So what will be the result? Result is a into p. So here the you know here the behavior of this operator is going to be different. So that's why I'm so this is an operator overloading. So we have different kind of operators. If so, if we specify or you, know, you can say if we categorize the operators according to the over those who are overloaded or those who are not overloaded. So here, here I'm writing down those operators who are overloaded and here i'm writing down those operators which those are not going to be overloaded okay so just write it down make one note so that in future if this kind of question will come so then you can easily so uh, you can easily answer this kind of questions so the first overloaded operator is arithmetic operators arithmetic operators right like plus minus division multiplication modulus right so all these are arithmetic operators next one is bitwise operators huh? uh, like you can say uh, and or negations left shift right shift so all are the bitwise operators those are overloaded so this is correct huh? Ye to overloaded function hai. so this is not going to be option now the next one is assignment Huh? assignment all kinds of assignments are so all the assignments are overloaded function now the next one is relational relational operations relational operations like equal to not equal to less than 
greater than so all are the overloaded function now the next one is logical same and or right now the next one is compound assignment compound assignment like you can say this kind right plus equal to so all kind of these kinds of operators are overloaded increment decrement so on so all kinds of these operators are overloaded now but overloaded functions are so many so my suggestion is just remember the not overloaded function because they are few and if you remember the non not no overloaded function you can easily answer the overloaded functions because rest of the operators are overloaded right so conditional operators are not overloaded so write it down so conditional operators are not overloaded next one is member selection pointers hmm? member selection pointers are not uh, overloaded scope resolution is not going to be uh, overloaded size of is not going to be overloaded type id or you can say object type information is not going to be overloaded right now come to the question so which of the following operators cannot be overloaded in c and c++ so uh, bitwise right shift assignment yes they are overloaded address of yes they are overloaded now the next one is indirection yes these are also overloaded but the structure reference are not going to be overloaded so option four is the right one so these are the list of overloaded function and this is the list of not overloaded functions so just make one quick revision and then they solve this good type of questions now question number 15 if x is a binary number if x is any binary number which is a power of 2 then the value of x and x minus 1 is what so they said x is a binary number which is a power of 2 so let's suppose any number which is a power of 2 let's suppose 8 let x is equal to 8 now then x minus 1 is equal to 7 then the value of x and if we apply the end operator in between these two what will be the answer so x8 how are we going to represent this in a binary form so the x value is 8 then 1 0 0 0 in a binary form and uh, this x minus 1 is 7 and if we apply the end operation between these two so 0 and 1 is 0 0 and 1 is 0 0 and 1 is 0 and 1 and 0 is 0 so the answer would be 0 0 0 so the option 2 is the right one okay, you can take any value of x and then uh, minus 1 then you get x minus 1 and you apply then and operations and you finally get the answer now question number 16 is an attribute a of data type where character 20 right so if uh, a is an attribute and the where character 20 is you know is giving the space 20 columns are there like we'll see 1 2 3 4 5 and so on till 20 hmm. and the attribute of b of data type character 20 and 20 is you know is the size of this character 1 2 3 up to 20 right and uh, the attribute a is taken how much memory space and the b taken how many memory space so let's talk about the where care 20 so how it behaves when it going to store the, uh, store the value ram okay so where care 20 means it's a variable size character so first it write it down it's a variable size character right which can store a character of size 0 and 20 or you can say 0 to at most 20 it can store the size of a you know any character 0 to 20 agar value yahan tak lie karte then only you are able to store okay if character less than 20 then memory uh, space taken by character the size according to the size of the value right let's suppose hamare paas so jo hamare paas space hai wo 20 tak available hai the range is 1 to 20 hmm. but agar 20 se kam hai size of your value then store the value in this ram r a m 
right and the rest of the space you can discard so you can write it down mm, memory space taken by character taken by character is equal to how much number of character available in your value in the value so that much space it going to take so uh, the space for this is one two three three so three memory space is taken by attribute a now let's talk about the next one b so this is a char 20 so it means it is a fixed size character so what is the property for this right so the range is again 1 to 20 so if the value is you know going to line between this uh, then store the value like sita and what about the rest of the blocks shall we discard all the blocks no we are not going to do that we are going to pad all the rest of the blocks so padding should be done in rest of the blocks and if your value is you know greater than 20 or you can say greater than the range it already specified then in that case you are going to skip the rest of the characters so this is the case so how much uh, memory is going to take complete 20 right 4 is already taken by uh, your value and the rest of 16 is going to pad so this one is 16 so right answer is oh sorry it's 20 not 16 16 bits are 16 or you can 16 blocks are already paired and 4 is already taken by the value so 20 is a memory space taken by the b attribute so 3 and 20 is the right answer now the question number 17 integrity constraint ensure that changes made to the database by authorized user do not result into the loss of data consistency which of the following statements is are true with respect to the example of integrity constraint? Now the first one is an instructor ID cannot be null provided instructor ID being a primary key. So you know that prime if uh, some attribute is a primary key, right? So the all the primary key value should not be null. So the first condition is uh, cannot be null, right? This is true because if this primary key, then its all values may not be null value. That's why it's unique. Now the next one is no two citizens have same Aadhaar ID. Yes, if uh, one person uh, has Aadhaar ID, then it should be unique from other person, right? So this is also true. Budget of a country, uh, company must be zero. So budget of a company is not uh, be null because if can if your company exists, so it, it have some budget, right? So this is not true. So A and B is the true, and C is the false. Now, question number 18. Let M and N uh, be two entities in ER diagram with simple single value attributes. R1 and R2 are two relationship between M and N. Right? So, M is the one entity and the N is the another entity and there is a relation between these two entities. And the relations are R1 and R2 and it's combined like this. Okay? And uh, you can see that R1 is one to many. So write it down one to many and the R2 is many to many, many to many. The minimum number of tables required to M and N, R1 and R2 in the relational model. So this is M, this is N, this one is R1 and this one is R2. And this is one to many and this is many to many. In you know that in the many to many case, in the many to many case, we need the separate table for entity, for the all the entities and for the relation relationship table, right? So one table is required for this, one table for required for this, and one table we required for this. But if we have one to many relationship or many to one relationship, in that case, we need the separate table for entities, but we merge the relation table where we, uh, on the side of uh, many. Right, so many side is here, so we are going to merge the table of relation is merge with this table from the many side. So how many tables we require? One, two, and three tables we required to uh, represent M and R1, R2 in the relation model. So this is four. And one thing I want to tell you that 
the, uh, the detailed explanation is already present in our DBMS lecture. So if you are not aware about this, so just first go through the entire ER diagram uh, chapter and uh, then come back to this question. Okay. Now the question number 19 is, consider a scheme R in relation N, N, P and Q are the attributes and the functional dependencies are like M implies N and P implies Q. So if we decompose this into a different different table that uh, the R1 will contain M and N and uh, the R2 will contain P and Q, right? Now M, N, in this case, in this case M implies N and here this is p implies q so all the functional dependencies are uh, you can say the preserved so this is a dependency preserving but for the lossless joint what we are going to see that r1 intersection r2 whether it implies r1 right or r1 intersection r2 whether it uh, you, you can say implies r2 but you, here you can write uh, see that the intersection of r1 and r2 is going to be null right so this is not uh, satisfy the lossless decomposition condition so that's why it's not a not a lossless joint but it, it is a dependency preserving so option one is the correct one now the question number 20 the order of a leaf node in a b plus tree is the maximum number of children it can have suppose that block size is of one uh, one kilobyte so the block size is one kilobyte the child pointer takes seven byte long. So the child pointer is, or you can say child pointer, or you can say it block pointer. It's all same. Block pointer value is seven byte long. Right? So the sec third parameter is search key search field value is equal to 14 byte long. And you have to find the order of the leaf node order of the leaf node the order of a leaf node in b plus three they define that it is a maximum number of children it can have right now they are talking about the b plus three where you know that all the records pointer are present in the leaf node so the formula is n minus one into search key field plus n into block pointers or you can say child pointers should be less than or equal to block size right so here you can see that if uh, you can some value is there right so the block pointer is 2 in this case hmm? so search key value is n minus 1 if the block pointers are n means if 2 so 2 minus 1 is 1 like this and all the record pointers are present in the leaf nodes so this is the b plus 3 now n minus 1 into we don't know the n value so just keep it n only so n minus 1 into search key uh, field value is already given it is 14 now block pointer value is already given so this is 7 and the block size is 1 kb now just multiply 14 n minus 14 plus 7 n okay and this is now 1 kb is around 1024 and this will become 21 n and this is less than or equal to 1024 one, then this is plus 14 21 and 1024 and this 14 will become 1038 you now the n value after solving this is 1038 uh, one, divide 21 it will become around 49.42 okay so n value is the order of the leaf not the maximum number of children it can have it maximum 49 point something right this is other it's not allowed so the order uh, the options are like 16 63 64 and 65 you can see that the 63 is greater than from this value 64 is also greater than this value 65 is also greater than this value so the correct option is 16 they're not asking about the what is the l value of n they are asking then what order of the leaf node should be allowed so it should be you know less than or equal to 49.42 so 16 is the answer.